welcome back. I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be playing some more non Golos decks on MTG Arena. Uh, it's not, not non Golos, non Oko. We're playing a Golos deck, but it, we're not including Oko. Uh, my brain is uh, fried from watching all the Mythic Championship, just a bunch of Oko decks smashing into each other. Um, so, this is a deck that the general kind of idea uh, was provided to me by one of my uh, viewers on YouTube, Russell Cat. Uh, he originally had a black blue kind of uh, artifact uh, affinity style, but Golos with like Stone Cold Serpent. Tried playing off the original list, it was a little disjointed, but uh, I made a little bit of tweak, tried to keep the essence of the deck. Um, but there's a lot of elements I did like and stuff that I wanted to explore. Um, so of note, we went to blue-white, um, we needed a more controlling board wipe, and I also, uh, in the form of time wipe, and I moved away from the, like, affinity style artifacts, so like the X cost, so Chamber Guardian and Stone Coils, or Chamber Sentry and Stone Coil Serpent, went to, uh, more things that we can hit off Golos. But basically what we're trying to do with the deck is use the combination of Chromatic Lantern, to make all our lands multicolor and then be able to activate Golos. Um, we also have the combination of cards with Ugin, which lowers the cost of our colorless spells, and Mystic Forge that lets us play colorless or artifact cards off the top of our library. Um, so those combination of cards lets us gain a huge bunch of card advantage. Um, so what we wanna do with the deck is Kind of dump out a bunch of artifacts, um, control the board to fairy, you have time wipe, then using Karn and Fey of Wishes you can search your sideboard, which I'll show in a sec, uh, to find a number of useful artifacts that you can then kind of lock the opponent out of the game. There's also a Tez in the sideboard that you can shoot the opponent with and kind of win that way there. Um, because we are playing a Golos deck, you can play some Utility Lands, I got Castle Ardenvale, Castle Vantress, a couple Blast Zones, Beacons, and a Karn's Bastion. Um, Sideboard-wise, I do want to make a... No, I think we're okay here. Uh, I was going to make a change, but so we have Graft Digger's Cage versus like the Graveyard decks, Spyglass versus just Planeswalker Heavy decks, Clarion. Um, when we have Chromatic Lantern out, we can cast this. Uh, a Chromatic Lantern in the board if we need to fetch for it, Time Wipe in the board, uh, same with Golos, uh, Circle of Loyalty against Control decks we can just keep making tokens, and uh, with Karn we can actually just animate this and then use it as like a, a beater. Uh, Liliana is just a good Planeswalker to kind of control the board with if we could wish for it, Tezzeret same way, uh, its ability to uh, Plus, you can deal damage, you can also use it kind of like an affinity style to cast your stuff for cheaper. Another Ugin, two Meteor Golems as removal, a Stone Coil Serpent, I like getting it uh, against like Hydroid Crisis, Oko, it's good there. And then a Dance of the Mance for uh, the, the more kind of controlling uh, matchups where they're going to kill a bunch of our stuff. We can sack a bunch of those cheap artifacts and then bring them all back to the battlefield. Um, the only thing I was considering is I might just cut this Golos here and then do Doom Foretold out of the sideboard. Uh, go like that. Or, you know, let's keep the, the Golos because we can search for it with Karn. Uh, Golos. Okay. So Doom Foretold. So we could kind of do like the Esper Stacks style strategy and then go search for it there. Um, so this is more of a best for one deck. Uh, because I usually like when we have the wish boards to play that format. So we'll run it through. So kind of keep it in tradition this week. Past week we've been playing a bunch of uh, non-Oko uh, decks. Uh, kind of foreshadowing if a ban happens, some potential decks that can be built. Uh, I did a whole article on Aetherhub if you want to check that out. We can find all my deck lists there as well. Um, so this hand's pretty good. We can control the board early against aggro, Teferi can bounce if need be, and then we can instant speed a Fey of Wishes if we need a specific card out of our sideboard. Um, so I'm just going to lead on Island. So this video will be up uh, early on Monday morning. You can catch uh, 
Mid there will be there all day as well on Monday. Okay, so this looks like more of a control deck, might be a fires deck. I'm just gonna uptick. Um, but we are doing a giveaway. All the followers on Twitch will be entered. So if you're not following, you can be entered. It's a foil robber riches. Um, so if you follow that, we'll do the draw on Monday for a random person. Uh, not hitting a land there really sucks. So I'm just gonna. I think we just plus again. Just past turn. Hey Quantum, how's it going today? So I plus because if this is a fires list, yeah, I do want to bounce this. A little annoying we didn't hit our land drop. Jeez. Okay, we got that. Uh, I'm just going to get a second white source here. Um, so we don't have the lantern yet. So I can't get Doom Foretold. I think we just get Spyglass here. Part of the reason being is this Teferi can keep bouncing our stuff, which will be annoying if we keep setting stuff up and they keep bouncing it. It also lets them uh, instant speed a board wipe if they don't play the fires. If we had the Chromatic Lantern out, then I'd play Doom Foretold. Oh, we're pretty bad spot here. So we probably lost this one here. Missing that line drop that turn hurt. We're effectively playing a, a turn behind now. Yeah, I'm just going to concede this one. Because the problem is I play Spyglass. If I name Teferi, then we don't have a clean answer for this. Um, we can't really advance our board, so... The Planeswalker decks are going to be tough. We really want to be playing against creature decks. Part of the reason why we're playing best of one. Uh, you usually get a bit more in terms of the aggro decks. It's also easier to name a deck that has one or two Planeswalkers versus a deck like that that has 10 or so plus. So we keep this hand. This is basically a redraw into Lantern. Uh, still don't quite know what the opponent's on. The nice thing is with Golos, you could cast the granted side of Faith. Okay, this is Rakdos Sacrifice. So we're just going to set this up. Trying to dodge a Chandra this turn. We could have upwards of five mana next turn. Okay, so no Chandra at least. Um, so I can just set up this turn, do Glass Casket. Play a Golden Egg and then just play Hallowed Fountain tapped. The nice thing with Glass Caskets and Artifacts, we can find it off Mystic Forge. And it's a pretty clean answer to a lot of these more aggressive decks. Got the cat, but do they have the oven? Hmm. Wonder what they take here. The forge is the best card. But fate could be anything, even a forge. I'm super excited. I built both my pioneer decks. I built mono black devotion and paper. Um more of the pack rat version and then i've actually built a just guys fires list um, which is pretty sweet um so here i'm going to take a setup turn 
I'm going to keep this on top because, okay, so I do want that. And we can't cast it this turn. Okay. So Ugin's really good because it lets us cast stuff for cheaper off the top with Forge. And they're not really pressuring us that much. Even if they drop Chandra here, I can just down tick on Chandra. So they'll hit us for three and then deal two damage with the priest activation. So this turn's probably Ugin hit Chandra and then try to uh, grant it for a board wipe. They'll also be inclined. We have two gain threes here, which is nice. Uh, they got the Reaper. Okay. Um, Karn's pretty sweet. Because we can start animating. Um, we might have shuffled to just get a, a land drop. We can exile, but I think we're okay. Just past the turn here. Cat comes here, this comes into us. One, two, three, four, five, six. We may have to. I'm gonna, on my upkeep, shuffle this away actually. Uh, they got the oven. We were fine until they got the oven. Now they can just keep drawing cards each turn with Midnight Reaper. We need Time White. And we're still right to take down the Chandra. It's interesting. They did that then. They could have attacked in first with Ugin. They missed three points of damage on our face. The one thing I was considering is going Jeskai just for Clarion main, just to help shore up kind of the go wide strategies. Are they just not gonna? Okay. I was going to say, if they don't kill Ugin, that's super good for us. It's fine. Take one. We really just need the one. Second priest. Multiple priests usually don't work the best together. So we'll just shuffle this away now that we don't have Ugin. Just get a blue source. Um, kind of want to Oh, there's the time wipe. There's a time wipe. Do we survive? Three, five, six, seven. They hit us with that. We don't, but we can gain two life. We're mana off. That's the problem. Okay, so if we gain three life, that's... So basically fogs this. We take two, three, four from this entering, five, six, seven. I think we might be able to hold off one turn.
might have been safer to be honest to just crack both of these interesting they didn't bring the cap back Opponents missed a couple points of damage here. We'll see how they ultimately attack. The best is if they just go face. So it's three, five, six, seven. Takes us, so we take basically three off this hit. I'm doing it before they could respond. They can sack two, we take two, then take the damage there. Second Midnight Reaper. Play the cat now. We're still not exactly there. We need a way to gain some life back. It's pretty aggressive by the opponent. Yeah, they're gonna draw a lot. And the problem is because they have the cat going uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We know we're drawing Karn, so that means we're not drawing a land. Ah, shit. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's dead. Because we would have time wiped, but they have the sack going, so it's basically a point off this, point off the cat being sacked, and the point off the cat coming down again. Um... Let me see if we tweak this slightly. Um, okay, cut these witching wells and cut a guild globe and then do Clarion. Just an earlier kind of option. And then uh, we want temples. Let's do those two and uh, steam vents and a factory. Four sources. We have the passage, so just cut down on a couple basics. The scry would also be useful just to kind of sort through our draw. So let me just give Arena a quick reset. It's been better recently, Arena, but I've still had a couple legs. I, uh, I did admittedly pick up another Oko deck. So I made to Diamond uh, with Simic Flash that we've been playing. Uh, but I picked up the Sultai Cat Food deck. That was at the Mythic Championship. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, so you still have like Oko and Gilded Goose, but you play um, the cat combo and then uh, Trail of Crumbs to get like a bunch of card advantage. I'll stream that one tomorrow. Um, but for now, we'll continue playing. See if the clear rounds help. The life gain can also be ready for. That event, the Oko. Momir event is the worst event I've ever played in my life. I did it just to get the card styles, but it took me forever, and I just instant conceded after, like, if we didn't have anything good. Everything is the same power toughness. It's whoever gets a flyer or, like, a relevant ability. I got the... Uh, what's the... The demon that you draw, and you know, I milled myself out one game that I was ahead, and I got pissed off and just shut off my laptop. Um, so against aggro, we have an option. So this is probably ramp. Really just want to hit lions here. Uh, it's a little bit of a risky draw, but... I 
Are you kidding me? Well, that's super annoying. Okay, they got Druid. I don't want to see a Nisa next turn, so I'm just going to exile this. This looks like a Simic ramp. Just, like, if you're going to play it, just cons... If you're not on the draw and you don't get, like, a good card relatively early, then I would, like, drop and then, like, concede. Just give someone else the win at a good faith. Fairy's not bad. I'm going to bounce the golden egg here. Okay, that's fine. We'll bounce that instead. Jeez. Um, get rid of a Karn. The fairy's not bad. Okay, so they got Druid. Mm. I'm inclined to believe, because we have the Clarion to wipe this up. And we have a backup to Fairy, so it's fine. Best case, they just drop this down, don't attack. Good thing the opponent stumbled a bit. If we draw a lion, I'm just gonna go Golos and get Blast Zone probably. Fay of Wishes. What are you going to get, opponent? So an interesting build. It's like a Simic. Uh, ele if elementals will be good enough, I don't know. I was playing, I put together a Vanifar pod deck, teamer based. Now they get negates. Well, you know what goes great with a negate? Here's a Teferi. Enjoy your negate. So I'm trying to find untapped here. For next turn. Um, yeah, so I put the Vanifar pod. It actually was okay with Risen Reef. If you can go wide, then it's good. Um, I'm just, the main downside with Elementals was people were main boarding Noxious Grasp, which hurts. Um, so here I'm just gonna Clarion, I think. Control the board. I can do it at instant speed. Speed, but then they get the mana. So I kind of want to hamper them off mana this turn. Because um, like Noxious Grass main deals with your dudes. Um, so I'm going to get car. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So seven mana next turn. Oh. Okay, so I know what we're getting now. We're getting Karn to get Spyglass. Ooh, that's actually pretty good too. This is cool because it turns off their clues. Hey, my, hey, it's going well. How about yourself? Thanks for stopping by. Um, so let's get Spyglass. Name. Okay, so the opponent's basically a ramp deck. Cool, locked him out there. So we are on a now Jeskai, previously blue-white. Uh, when I say Jeskai, we are just splashing for Clarion main. Um, so this is a artifact deck that's looking to use Chromatic Lantern with Golos to activate, then use Ugin as a cost reduction with Mystic Forge to play a bunch of artifacts. Then you have Fey of Wishes and Karn to search through a wish board sideboard 
for a bunch of like cool cards and basically you want, to, you want to do dump a bunch of artifacts tutor up a tesseret and then start laser fingering them um, so we lost a couple ones early added in the red mana um, so that game their opponent did stumble a bit on mana but we missed a couple drops but Teferi helped there Um, for all those who are new to the channel tuning in, if you don't uh, follow currently on Twitch, we are doing a giveaway on the channel, uh, so it'll be tomorrow, so it's available to all my followers on Twitch, so it's a pack foil robber of riches, so I'm going to do the giveaway tomorrow, so if you are interested, uh, it's free to follow on Twitch, just looking to build up the channel here, but I will be doing a draw and announcing it. So our hand's a little slow, that's actually a great job, and I'm going to get this going if they drop a lot of one drops we can pop this next turn hey the life gains going to be relevant from that really just want to get to this time white if we can get there then we should be fine we'll go lantern here Lantern means any land next turn that's untapped, we can time wipe. We also are setting up for the Ugin drop. So they have a pump here. Rimrock Knight? Nope. Light up the stage or skewer. Really want to land this turn. Beautiful. We get it before they get that off, and then we can follow it up with either another white next turn. If we can drop Ugin, that makes this golden egg free. Hmm. I don't want to hit a land. Can we afford to take a hit next turn is the question. So I'm just going to golden egg, try to hit a land. And then, so I can pop this for three life. Ah, oh, that's even better. So if we had the land for Ugin, everything we would have just done is free. Hey, Master Blaster, how's it going? Okay, they got Robber Riches. Okay, we have Teferi. We also have Ugin. So... This gains us two life. gonna make a make a dude this turn how are you finding the event I found it very very boring of an event uh, Tibble's a little annoying we can bounce this token with Tef Okay, so let's go first, Mystic Forge. Um, do we down tick with Ugin? I think we do. So we didn't gain the life there, but just want to see what we could chain together. They've seen enough. So I was going to attack in, see if they wanted to trade it off. We get this, we get to cast it for free, draw another card. Beating mono red is actually pretty satisfying. Uh, 
uh, bat ramp in standard, like a uh, regular standard? I actually think, like the deck I've had the most success with all the big green, so the uh, blue green splash whatever decks has been Simic Flash. Sounds pretty sweet, especially if it's a creature deck. Um, you need counter spells main, and unlike the blue white uh, control deck we played, uh, it presents a quick enough clock, which is nice. Uh, few games. Ooh, stolen by face, pretty cool. Uh, I've actually managed with Simic Flash in best of one to beat a deck that played three main board Shifting Ceratops, which was actually pretty funny. Okay. So drawing to the Ugin. These can set up our next draws. So let's draw first. Not quite sure what the opponent's on. Uh, it's a lucky combination of, I play two Aethergust main, so you can stall it and then um, the, what's, Dude's name. Uh, I'm gonna play Karn here to bait out a counter spell. Uh, Night Pack Ambusher, just kind of play around that, try to tempo them that way. Okay, so this is Simic Flash or like Simic Control. Uh, Judunaya Giant. So we need a Teferi. Um, just set up a scry. I think we need more action. Four different giants. I saw one less is like a Naya giant. I tried uh, like Naya fires at one point um, with like a bunch of the adventure giants. Kind of wanted them to make the first move or just have something else as a bait spell. This Ugin's kind of our gas right now. Okay, once upon a time. This blast zone's good because we can just start pumping it up as they go. I just wanted to play something like Brineborn. Okay, so there's the Ambusher. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gosh, I forgot. I forgot to put counters on that. Mm. So they drop Ambusher here. We have a couple board wipes. Which is good. Let me put a stop there. Um, Beanstalk Giant, the ramp one, or the um, the stomp. Uh, what's his name? So I think missing the counters that turn is going to be a little annoying. Okay, we got Golos. So I'm going to do this because then I can also put a counter on it. This will likely buy a bait out a counter spell. Uh, I 
hate control players who don't act quick. Like, I love me my counter spell decks, but. So I'm going to take the hit this turn. Um, part of the reason is I can put a counter on this and then we can hit both these because they're at 4 CMC. And then I can also just try to Clarion to bait something out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There may be Blind. Actually, if they counter this, we're dead. Because I can crack it, but I'm a mana short. That's the problem. So they're hitting us for 10, sorry, 7, 13. Most I could go is up to 12, but if I play this, then I'm short to sack this. I miscounted there. We had the option to double glass casket, but not do that. Ultimately, that's probably a pretty tough matchup. Just a deck with a bunch of counter spells. The black probably gives them removal, so they probably play like Tyrant Scorn and stuff, and the, the casket's not being very useful. Also, we gave him like four turns of not really doing anything to just build up a critical mass of spells. Usually you want to, to beat those flash decks, you need to put pressure on them early. Either get some one drops down. Because like whenever I'm playing Simic Flash, like I love playing against uh, like D Esper Doom or even like Fires is usually pretty easy. my own opponent. Come on. They coming out? I feel it. I love fires more. I like I I built the the deck and paper. I actually got a lot of cool. So I opened my San Diego uh, Comic Con. So I have the Nico Bolas Dragon God, like full art kind of looking one. I got the full art um, Royal Scions. I got my Teferis in there. It's just like a collection. I sold my modern deck and got that. And then Mono Black is my other. So we'll be going to play first Pioneer event on Wednesday in paper. See if the opponent's on counters. They are. We drop a threat down here. Well, the nice thing is we got double glass casket. So we should be able to catch the Brineborn. I haven't played much mono green, like the stompy style. Uh, 
you know what? Let me just crack this so it stops with. It was something I thought would be like pretty strong, but just never ended up kind of seeing through. Um, I'm just going to play out the extra land here. I want to save this for when they have something bigger. Okay, so we got a counter out of them. This does look a little bit older of a list. Um, most of them have removed opt out of the, of the decks. Um, you just play four once upon a times. Um, they're not really applying pressure on us, so let's just go like this, and then we'll start making human tokens each turn. So the nice thing is this fixes our mana for Clarion as well. So we can try to bait them out this turn. So that actually works too. So that's one more sabotage out of them. Since we can't make the token. But next turn's our time wipe turn, otherwise we're dead. They have one card left. Actually, that's good for us. Because we can try to bait with the Clarion first. So we'll draw a card here, trying to find a negate that wipes them there, and we can make a token on end step. Uh, Mad Delic, um, I just asked that in the chat if we're describing the decks, if we can choose a different adjective to describe. Um, let's not use a disease that does kill a lot of people. Please and thank you. So Teferi's a good job of protecting and we might be able to. The nice thing is I can proliferate. They're main board in Oko. No worries. So we need to kind of take this Oko off the table. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we would have got Spyglass and then locked them out there. Yeah, I usually just, uh, I've had a lot of family members, unfortunately have been afflicted by that, so I usually just don't like referring to decks. So just give an arena a quick restart, and then we'll go from there. We'll do run it one more, see from there. So hopefully once Oko goes, uh, gets banned, Hopefully they ban Once Upon a Time too. We can play some more jank decks. There's a whole bunch of strategies. Like, I want to play Great Henge decks. I want to play basically any big artifact or big creature that doesn't immediately get invalidated. Keep this hand. Cycler, early removal, board wipe, tutor. Uh, usually don't want two of these.
Yeah, Veil can go as well. I'm tired of spending three mana to get it cryptic commanded. Okay, so they go edge wall here. I'm going to do this on the innkeeper. It gives them enough card advantage that I'm fine keeping it off the board. I know we have two board wipes, but you want to keep, like, if they're just cycling through their cards, then they're still getting utility. They're hitting line drops, they're hitting bigger things. Full price Falmire. Missed the black line. Um, so this deck, what am I most afraid of? Questing Beast. That is something I'm afraid of. So we'll put a... Charge Counter. Do we take one more attack? Yeah. Drawing triple Fey of Wishes is quite annoying. Um, that's fine. I kind of want them to overcommit to the board here. Sorry. My wife's texting me from downstairs asking uh, if she could put dinner on. Or lunch. Yeah, Questing Beast is like a stupid powerful card, but our friends made a format that makes it pretty useless. Okay, so they got the Innkeeper. We got a Clarion as well, which is nice. Um, so, gonna get Karn or uh, Golos to get Castle Argonvale. And then we can play Ugin out, which will lower the cost of our stuff. Ooh. Kind of want chromatic, but let's go Golos this time. Getting Ugin down is going to be really useful. Liliana's Triumph. Um, if that's the case, I think we maybe then just set up a scry. So this is actually pretty good. We'll gain a life off it at least. So we'll take three. Oh, okay, so we're Clarion in next turn. Even like Rankle. Rankle's a really good card, but it's just getting trumped. Each player draws a card, loses a life. Um, yeah, it's fine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so let's go like this. Then the question is probably Karn. And I don't know if we want to activate it just yet. Because this is free next turn anyways. Just, just gains us a life. So on the sideboard, I don't... Let's see what we got. Maybe just Meteor Golem. Uh, or Lantern.
I'm gonna get Meteor Golem just because it can blow up if they have something big. Yeah, we got Questy. Because my other consideration was to animate the Mystic Forge. Okay, so they can have Rankle. The fact that Green Black has this much haste. Uh, it's typically inferred as that. Um, so we can go Meteor. Kill it. Could have also Ugin down ticked, but then they get it back with Order of Midnight, so this gives us a blocker. Because um, you usually had uh, the wish card, so that's why they call it a wish board. Um, there was, I uh, forget what it was called, uh, like Cunning Wish and those ones there. Oh, does that just kill us? Ah, they got us, Xaxes. Stumbled a little out of the gate there, but... So overall, not too bad. I do like this iteration of the deck better with the Clarions main. Um, maybe just want to go down to two-phase. And then just play another Ugin main. Like, felt like we always wanted Ugin in here to kind of get the engine going. And I'm inclined to just go up, eh, no, I think three Ugans. Probably make that switch like that for future versions. Anyways, thanks for all for tuning in. Gonna wrap this one up. I'm off work tomorrow, so I will be streaming pretty much all day. Um, so we'll be playing some meta decks and some more brews as well. Um, so if you're available, feel free to stop by. And then uh, we'll also be doing a giveaway of the Foil Robber Riches on the channel tomorrow. Uh, thanks all for tuning in and have a great rest of the day, night, wherever you're, you're coming from.